very much afraid of this aircraft, also called the Bentwing Devil. Listen to the sound of the F4U Corsair. It was able to outperform the primary Japanese fighter, the Mitsubishi Zero. And while the Zero could outturn the F4U at slower speeds, the Corsair was faster and could outclimb and outdive the enemy fighters. Tactics developed in the early war, such as the fast weave, took advantage of the Corsair, Corsair strength. Invented by a Navy pilot, the Thatch Weave was pitting two Corsairs against one Japanese Zero, flying line abreast if the Japanese Zero went after one of the Corsairs, the other one could turn inside of it and begin his attack. The Thatch Weave, the performance advantage combined with the ability to take a whole lot of punishment meant that a pilot could place an enemy aircraft in the killing zone from the 650 caliber machine guns long enough to keep him there and blow him right out of the skies. Carried 2,300 rounds of ammunition. Gave it over a full minute of firepower from each gun. Corsair served with the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Marines, the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm and the Royal New Zealand Air Force and later the French Air Navale and quickly became the most capable carrier-based fighter bomber of the war. The uh, demand incidentally for the aircraft overwhelmed the Vaughn's manufacturing capability. It was originally built by the Vaughn Aircraft Company resulting in additional aircraft being produced by the Goodyear Company, yes, exactly, the Goodyear, as the FG-1. And the Brewster Company as the F-3A-1. Commonly known as the Sweetheart of the Marianas or the Angel of Okinawa for its roles in these campaigns respectively. The names were given by ground troops rather than by naval or marine aviators. Among pilots, however, the aircraft was nicknamed Ensign Eliminator, Bit Wing Eliminator, because it required many more hours of flight training to master than any other Navy carrier-borne aircraft. Oddly enough, participating in the design of the F4U was Igor Sikorsky, who was a helicopter designer. That propeller out in front of it is 13 feet in diameter, hence the bent wings. They had to put a landing gear under there, which would extend long enough to allow that 13-foot propeller to clear the deck of the aircraft carrier. So that resulted in the inverted gull wing, which kept the landing gear reasonably short, making it strong enough for the carrier landings. Being flown today, as I said, by Dan Danio of Jupiter, Florida. He flies for the American Air Power Museum out in Farmingdale, Long Island at Republic Airport. He started flying back in 1953. He's rated in many warbirds, World War II fighters and bombers. He's also rated in the Challenger 601, Citations L-39. He is an ACE examiner for the International Council of Air Shows where he authorizes other pilots to fly aerobatics. He's been married 54 years, three children, four grandchildren. Dan Damio, Jupiter, Florida, taking the F4U, whistling death through its paces here at Dover, Delaware. And immediately after Dan Damio gets through, you're gonna be witness to today's modern Marine and uh, Naval aircraft with the FA-18 Super Hornet. A lot of noise and a lot of speed in a demonstration that will act with a really awe you. This aircraft is something to see. And then immediately following the demonstration by the Super Hornet, Dan Damio is gonna come back with the F4U Corsair and we're gonna put the old and the new together, the past and the present, and show you the
United States Navy Legacy Flight. Putting the F4U up in formation with the FA-18 Super Hornet. F-18 Hornet taxing out in just a moment. We'll turn the microphone over to call sign Dieter, Tom Bucker, to describe for you the F-18 Hornet demonstration. As Dan Damio just uh, makes a few more passes while we wait for the Hornet to get ready to get airborne. He's taxing out now, raw power. Where well, do you see the takeoff maneuver done by the FA-18? Want to say a big thank you to all of the 2009 Dover Air Force Base key supporters. That includes, amongst others, the USO, Central Delaware Chamber of Commerce, Delaware Credit Union League, the Elks Lodge 1903, Dover Federal Credit Union, Price Auto Group, the Officers uh, Spouse Club, Delaware Chamber of Commerce, I.G. Burton, Towns and Brothers, Kent County Motors, Willis Auto Mall, Holden Dodge, Walter Fox Post 2, Dover Law, P.A.L. and D. Suzuki and Bennett Premier Motorsports. No federal endorsement is implied, but thank you. And thank you, uh, too, to Chevron for sponsoring Julie Clark, for Embry Riddle sponsoring Matt Chapman, and for the Disabled American Veterans for sponsoring Panchito, the B-25 World War II Jimmy Doolittle Bomber. Going through some last minute cockpit checks in the FA-18 and we'll be ready to go. And Dan Damio going to the perch to hold out there while the performance is completed of the FA-18 Hornet. And then we'll be ready with the legacy flight. Tell you what's coming up after that. I'll have Matt Chapman flying the Eagle 580 from Embry-Riddle University. And then Matt Chapman has got a bet. We had a little, uh, we had a little discussion at dinner last night on which could beat whether Matt Chapman and the Eagle 580 with a flying start could beat Bill Brack in the Air Force Reserve jet car. So they got into quite an argument last night. They said, why don't we just race and find out? So, after the legacy flight, you're gonna see Matt Chapman do his performance, and then we're gonna race Matt Chapman against the Air Force Reserve jet car. And once that is complete, then, ladies and gentlemen, it'll be the United States Air Force Flight Demonstration Squadron the Thunderbirds. Stand by for the Hornet. <laughs> 